It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. In other words, every man, Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter whether you're uh, Caucasian, white skin, black skin, African American, uh, Indian or Asian or Hispanic, uh, no matter what, a Native American. And so you got all different varieties of mankind. So there's not just But one colors. blood. But they were all made of one blood. <laughs> one blood. I mean, if they weren't all made of one blood, then you'd have had to have, you know, Hispanic man die, Caucasian man die, black man die, African American man die, uh, Asian man die. No, no, one man, Jesus Christ, because right. one blood. So one blood made men of all nations, humanity of all nations. And so it only took one blood to redeem all men, and that's the blood of Christ. So our and so identity through faith is in his blood. Skin deep. Uh, yeah, so your identi- identity cannot just be, uh, you can't find your identity in what the color of your skin. Or if you're freckled. Yeah, I got freckles, so <laughs> <laughs> who knows what that is. So, <laughs> so, so you can't. Get your identity from I'm, a, and if you fill out an application, you know, I'm a Caucasian, or I'm an Asian, you know, or I'm a uh, African American, or you know, uh, they have all kinds of terminology, you know, to try to identify what right. you are. Right. But you cannot get your identity from your skin because <laughs> you originally got your identity from your sin, <laughs> not from your Ooh, skin. That's good, huh? And so one man, Adam, got us in this mess. And so one man, Jesus Christ, how did right. he do that? Through the incarnation, God got in a body and the blood of Christ is the blood of God. Yeah. It's divine Ooh, blood. Yes. It's the blood yes. of the new man. It's the blood of the new creature, the new creation. And so that blood carries redemption for all men. That's our identification in the blood. In the I blood. mean, if you, you're going to, uh, you have a blood test and that gives you your identification. Well, yeah, not in your skin. No. I mean, now if, uh, if, if you were dying, you know, and, and, uh, and you needed the blood transfusion, uh, you're not going to say, uh, did that come from African American? Did that come from an Asian? Just give me some Did that come good from blood. Hispanic? I mean, after I take this blood, um, is it going to, like, no, no it's the, you don't care where the blood comes from. That blood is what's necessary to save your life. life you don't care about the color of the, the skin where it came from. You just need the red. You need the blood. That's right. <laughs> and so, so the blood of Christ and through faith in, in his blood, mm-hmm. that's a part of our identification mm-hmm. because the blood of one man contaminated the whole human race, which is the blood of Adam and sin. And that, that you were contaminated, it says in Ezekiel, in your blood. But God has given us a new blood, a new, blood. A new DNA, a new creature in Christ Jesus. Mm-hmm. So through faith in his blood, and so what happened on the cross, let's just say it this way. Um, when Jesus came, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jesus, you know, the incarnation, when he mm-hmm. was born, angels mm-hmm. are singing and wise men came and they're trying to figure out who is this baby? <laughs> well, he's God manifest in the flesh. And so Jesus uh, came and then you can see his, his lifestyle, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, in his authority over right. Uh, sickness and disease and over right. Satan. And so they even ask in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, what manner of man is this? Manner. And when John the Baptist saw Jesus for the first time, he knew who he was and yeah. he said, behold, the Lamb of God yeah. who takes away the sin yeah. of the world. He's identified him. Yeah. He was the lamb with that blood. He is the perfect sacrifice. That would be poured out for the sins of the world. His blood. And so Jesus, the lamb of God, and I think in the book of Revelation, he's referred to as still the lamb lamb of of God. God. And so understanding what happened on the cross is Jesus became that one 
perfect lamb, that perfect sacrifice. Right. And so it's not the blood of goats and calves. Mm -mm. It's not the blood of any kind of animal, but it is the precious blood of Jesus. We are redeemed. And that's mm -hmm. without blemish and without spot. And we are redeemed by that blood. So your identification with Christ. And uh, when the Old Testament, when they brought each family had to bring a lamb and that lamb had to be uh, flawless, had to be perfect. And so the priest would examine the lamb, the sacrifice. If the sacrifice was perfect, the worshiper was accepted based on the condition of the sacrifice. In other words, the priest examined the sacrifice. So and if the sacrifice was perfect, then the worshiper was accepted to come by that perfect lamb. And so when you come to God and you come by faith in the blood of right. Jesus and you come by what God has done in Christ, then you say, here is the sacrifice. God examined what Jesus is, what he was, what he did, and what happened from the cross to the throne. He said, that is the perfect sacrifice. Perfect and sacrifice. you are accepted based on the condition of that lamb which is Jesus. You know, remember Billy Graham? He used to have those crusades and it's just a powerful evangelist. And then he'd give his message and the invitation for people to come. Then he would stand back and pray and thousands would come to the front and they would sing that song, Just As I Am. Mm -hmm. Without one plea. Yeah, that was, that was his constant that song. that blood mm -hmm. was shed for me. O Lamb, o Lamb of, God. of God, I come. I come. And so it's you're coming come. to God based on the blood sacrifice of Jesus. That one man, one man. And so Romans chapter 5 says that death reigned by one man, Adam, through his disobedience. And now we have received the abundance of grace, yes. the gift of righteousness, and we reign in life through one man, Jesus Christ. So you really only have to have one man to reign in life. One man. Everybody said, well, I need to know this man, that man. I got to have, especially if you're a single woman, I got to have a man. Well, you only have to have one man yeah. to enjoy life, reign in life. Right. And that one man is Jesus Christ, and you are complete in him. Amen. You know, that just brings me back to the lady I met last week again. And the moment that she uh, decided to follow Jesus, you know, um, someone spoke to her and said, you know, the things that you're trusting in will not bring you life. And she was trusting in things that her thing, pocket. Things she you're holding on to. In her pocket, you know, she was in a new age. And she was trusting in that to give her guidance and whatever she Comfort needed. Comfort in that. And they said, just let it go. And she took those out, and let him go. And she said, I'm not going to trust in that anymore. I'm going to trust in Jesus. Wow, the moment she did, her life was transformed because Jesus is alive. Jesus is real. And the moment we let go of everything else we're trusting in, yeah. put our trust in Jesus. Oh, Lamb of God, I come to you. That moment, wow, there's such a release from the old identity that we've been enslaved yeah. in and we embrace the identity of Christ mm -hmm. who is our life and in righteousness he gives us his love and acceptance yeah. he changes Approval. our identity yeah. so now in Matthew Mark Luke and John if you're reading the four gospels then uh, you will see Jesus dying Jesus buried Jesus raised mm -hmm. and so you'll study what happened the Via Dolorosa, what happened uh, while Jesus was beaten, what happened when he went to the cross, and you'll see what happened when he was raised from the dead. So you see things, or you see what man saw mm -hmm. in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. But if you come to Paul's revelation, that Paul actually calls himself a man in Christ. So if you come mm -hmm. to Paul's revelation, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. So if you come to Paul's revelation, he shows you what happened in the unseen or what happened on the cross, right. not just what man saw, but what God saw. Mm -hmm. And he shows you what happened in the resurrection of Christ, not just what man saw, 
but what happened in the spirit or what happened unseen are to see what God saw, mm. what happened in the spirit, and even see what the devil what saw. The devil so saw. what part of the gospel scares the devil is <laughs> the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so the sin of Christianity is the, the cross, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. And so mm. many religions offer lessons to try to fix man. But only Jesus Christ gives life, That's right. eternal life. So yeah. Jesus didn't come just to give lessons, even though the teaching is significant and very important. But Jesus didn't come just to give us lessons. Every religion offers lessons. Right. But Jesus came to die on the cross and to pour out his blood to redeem us from Satan and from sin and to set us free. Yeah. So there's something in Christianity that is totally different than every other what you would call religion. Because Christianity is not just a religion. Religion, of course, it's a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so what happened on the cross, and it says in Colossians, through the blood of his cross, Colossians 1, 20 mm -hmm. through 22. And he says, you are redeemed from your condition and set free from, uh, yeah. what does it say, your wicked works and your, your evil minds, and mm -hmm. you're set free. And now through the blood of his cross, he presents you holy, unblameable and unreprovable in the presence of God. Amen. You know, you just keep saying the blood of his cross, and that includes the cross, the burial, the resurrection, and the triumph. That's, <laughs> that's the whole act of God. But it began on the cross when Jesus was, was hung, his yeah. nails. Mm -hmm. The nails went through his hands yeah. and pinned him to the cross. Yeah. You know, he became a curse. The blood flowed mm -hmm. out of him. Yeah. And he died. He fulfilled yeah. every scripture that was prophesied about him yeah. on the cross. He fulfilled and, the law and the prophets. Yes. And the soldiers around, when that all happened and it thundered, you know, <laughs> the lightning earthquake, said, my God, <laughs> the you whole know, earth in your hands. My God, why have you forsaken And then uh, they said, surely this yes. must have been the Son, Son of God. Of God. Yeah. They had a moment of revelation yeah. that that was the death of an old creation. Yeah, this was the Son of God. And so Jesus, the Messiah, hmm. in Christ, in the Anointed One, what God did in Christ far exceeds any damage done to us by your past mm -hmm. or by sin mm -hmm. or by Adam's fall. What God did in Christ where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Oh, yeah. And so you have to literally find yourself or see yourself in Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, on the cross, it's a perfect picture of the love of God, yeah. the wisdom of God, and the righteousness of God, and the power of God. Yeah. What happened from the cross to the throne is the love of God, the wisdom of God, the righteousness of God, and the power of God. Mm. And so God did in Christ what he wanted to do in every man. Every man. Aha, uh -huh, you should write that down. <laughs> God did in Christ what he wanted to do in every man. Yeah. So if any man <clears throat> be in Christ, he is a new creature that old things have passed, passed away. away. Behold, everything has, has become, become new. Great. So Jesus changes everything yeah. because what happened on the cross embraced everything that Satan did in Adam, sin and death and the curse and sickness and disease. God did in Christ what he wanted to do in every man. So your identification with Christ actually on the cross is where Jesus took our identical condition. Mm -hmm. And Paul says, we were there. Mm -hmm. Paul says, I was there. Mm -hmm. So go back to Galatians 2.20 real quickly here where Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. So just take that for a minute because I know other translations say different things. But just start with I am. I am. Mm -hmm. I am. In other words, I am. my identity, mm -hmm. who I am, Mm -hmm. is determined by what happened in Christ on the cross. Mm -hmm. In other words, this has determined my identity. I'm not 
what the past made me. I'm not what my failures made me. I'm not what my parents made me. Right. I am now identified with Christ. I am the workmanship of God created in Christ. So I am, Paul says, this is who I am, crucified with Christ. I'm crucified with I Christ. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I, I live, live, yet not I. Not not your old identity. My, not my old identity. Yeah. Not yet, not I. But Christ lives in me. Wow. He has made me an unusual. I mean, I I use this terminology some time ago at a meeting uh, because um, people have all these different kinds of dogs, you know. And so when we grew up, <laughs> when we grew up, our kids have all kind of dogs. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, I forget all the names of them, but <laughs> nowadays they come up with all these different combinations. Yeah. When I grew up, we were just happy to have. We had Labrador, you know, uh, Labrador, we which is a, a smart German dog. Shepherd. You had a German yeah. Shepherd, and so uh, we were at these people's house, friends of ours in Georgia, and they they have what they call Labradoodles. Well, what they is a Labradoodle? Them. I mean, that's it's like a, a Labrador with a poodle, <laughs> right? And so they come up with a new breed called a Labradoodle, all right? So what God did in Christ is now he has come up with a new kind <laughs> of human that never existed before. So what are we going to call this new kind of human? A new creation. A new in creation. other words, you're not, you're not fully Labrador. You're not fully Putin. You're not, you're not fully God. You're not fully human. But what are you? You are a God man. A God man. A Christian. You're a Christian. You're a, a Christ Christian. person. Yes. Made after the pattern of Jesus Christ. Wow. What produced this new breed? what God did in Christ, a new kind of human mm -hmm. that never existed before. How did that happen? My goodness. I think it started one of those uh, views that we have. You said love, mm -hmm. the love of God. And I think our favorite verse in the Bible about the love of God is John three sixteen. Mm -hmm. For God so loved the world yeah. that he gave his only begotten son. Yeah. Whoever believes in, one translation says, believes into him, yeah. has everlasting life. Mm -hmm. Then it says, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, mm -hmm. but that the world through him yeah. might be saved. And then uh, Paul sees that revelation in, in 2 Corinthians 5 in verse 19. He said, it was God personally present, the Amplified says, in Christ, yeah. he was reconciling and restoring the world to favor with himself, not counting up and mm. holding against men yeah. their trespasses, but canceling them yeah. and committing to us the message of reconciliation, restoration to favor. Wow. And so God in Christ is not against you, but he is, he's done the work of wow. forgiveness yeah. and of loving us into to yeah. himself. Uh, one translation says yeah. God was personally present in Christ, hugging the world to himself. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Frank Hyatt. I'm from Cortland, Ohio. I work for a company called Millwood Incorporated. i um, been there for 20 years next month. I work in the HR, safety, and chaplain ministry. We're owned by uh, Christian owners, and I've been blessed to be involved in the chaplain ministry for the last 20 years. I'm blessed. Uh, I'm obviously a beautiful wife named Angie. I have four beautiful girls. Ashley's 35. Heather, who we're speaking about today, is 33. Liana's 22, and my sweet Mary's going to be 17 this year. When I was reading Pastor Mark's uh, letter to the partners uh, last month, he said in the, in the letter that he wanted to invite us personally down here to this, this supernatural conference. And I told one of my chaplains, I said, hey, I'm gonna go down to Louisiana, Pastor Mark Hankins Church. I said, I haven't been there around it for, they're flowing in the river. If you wanna come with me, you're more than welcome to come. If not, I'm going by myself, man, the Holy Ghost. So I uh, made the plans to come down. Bosses at work were all excited to go down and get refreshed in the Holy Ghost. And I told my wife, I said, you know, I think when I get an opportunity, if God makes a way, I think I'd like to speak to Brother Hankins to say thank you to him for being obedient back on uh, February 10th, 2004, which happened to be my Heather, who's 33 now. 
she was 16 at the time, and she was in a very, very uh, bad state in her life, um, really out there far. And I'm gonna try to get through this without getting emotional, but uh, I was very dark seasons. So, praise God, I told my wife, I said, if I get a chance, I'm gonna tell them thank you. That's all I wanted to do. I didn't even bring the, the, the actual prophecy that I had. So, what I wanted to tell them was, uh, thank you for being obedient to a servant on my daughter's 16th birthday. She had been out making some horrible decisions. She had a substance abuse problem. She was in a psych ward, uh, pondered suicide had come to her in a season of her life. Really, really dark. She was 16, didn't know what she was gonna do. And we invited her over for dinner on a Wednesday night. And I didn't think she would come because she was really out there. And she did come over. And we had dinner and she, I said, hey, we're gonna go see uh, Brother Mark Hankins at our church. Would you like to come? You always liked him when you were growing up, a little one. So she drove separate, we went our way. And I said, I don't know if she's gonna show up or not, but she showed up. She said, we're not sitting near the front because I was an usher there and I could have sat near the front. And I said, no, we'll sit in the back. You know? So we sat in the second to the last row, all the way in the back of the sanctuary, sanctuary about a thousand people and Brother Hankins was ministering, and she stayed there, and she was very agitated during the service. He didn't even flow with the Holy Ghost that night. It was more of a teaching. It was awesome. But I had asked the Lord in that service to, uh, it'd be good for her, probably better for me, if, if you could just speak a word to her, maybe, because I, I knew how Brother Hankins flowed with the Holy Ghost. I'm just being honest with you. We were standing on the Word, being my wife, speaking the blessings of God over my children, but we are in a season of standing not trying to grow weary and just working the word standing on the word so in this service he's finished and pastor joe caminetti said uh are you finished and he goes i think i am but i don't think the holy ghost is so he got back up stand in front of the congregation and i said lord i said just just something here for for heather just to let her know how much you care for her and i'm paraphrasing but it was just something murmuring and she goes is he about done and she was looking at her fingernails and you know, and just kind of like agitated. I said, honey, he's almost done, we'll be leaving, okay? She was sitting here, my wife was sitting between us on the other side, and Brother Hankins started, got up and started walking our direction, stepping over the chairs. And as he was walking towards us, now we're all the way in the back of the sanctuary, like the sanctuary is here. People are just starting to fall out. He's starting to laugh. Ushers are having a hard time with him. He's not stopping and ministering to anybody. He's like walking over the chairs and coming towards us. And I said, my daughter says, he's not coming towards us. And I kind of went, I hope the God he is, because this is what we're here for. This is why this service is still going on. And he walks all the way back as he's touching people and he's the power of God, they're falling out. But when he got back to my daughter and Heather and myself, he went between us, he laid his hands on her shoulders, and she just flew underneath the, the screen, the flew underneath the, the seats, the row, and he stops and he just makes this, he goes, that's the reason why the Holy Ghost didn't stop. And he started prophesying about the Spirit of God, he knows exactly where she's at. The Spirit of God is upon you. The Spirit of God is healing and making you whole. The Spirit of God is going to use you to reach people. I mean, he went on and on and on about the Spirit of God loving her, and she was wiped out underneath the seats. And I just rejoiced. I said, God, you're so awesome. But I took that prophecy, wrote it up, had it wrote up, and I put it in my Bible for probably about seven years till she was in her mid-20s. And she slowly, surely kept coming back. Now she's 33, uh, loves God, got the sweetest personality, married, I have a grandson, and uh, to God be the glory. And uh, it's just a, an awesome testimony. And I had told her I was coming down, and I sent a picture. I, I, I talked to Pastor Hankins, and she said, oh yeah, I remember him. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome, Dad. And that was a bad season of my life, but, but thank God for Brother Mark Hankins being obedient to the Holy Ghost to show you that Jesus still cares and loves me. So, indebted to Brother Hankins and Pastor Joe for just listening to the Lord. And um, I never thought I would be able to share this testimony, but I, I just wanted to share it. If I could say this real quick to you, is that to the people out there that listen, don't grow weary, do not give up. God's hand is upon your kids. Be like the, like the father looking for the prodigal son. Get the fatted calf ready, get the ring ready, 
be looking because God is drawing and bringing the children back home. Do not give up. He is faithful. He is faithful. In all the years that the enemy stole away from me, God has restored my daughter. We are so close. She has such a tender heart. She calls me every morning when she's on her way to work. She's a nurse. We get to pray. And when I was down here, I, I missed her call. She said, Dad, I missed us not talking this morning. I'm praying. I love you. Have a great day. So Jesus is faithful. Just don't give up and keep your eyes on him. You know, my parents love what they do. And the reason why they love what they do is because it is a call that God has placed on the inside of them. A call to teach their people faith, a call to teach people who they are in Christ, a call to teach people the authority of the believer, a call to teach people that it is the will of God for them to be healed, a call to teach people that they can be happy and live a joyful and joyous life, a call to teach people what they have as a believer. It is a powerful, powerful word that they have on the inside of them. And I, for one, even as just their child, I, for one, am so thankful for their obedience because of everything that they have done, everything they have poured out all of their lives since they got married. They have made this their mandate to bring these messages to the world. They don't just leave it on the inside. They don't just keep it for themselves, but they share this message. Why? Because they want your life to change. They want the world to change. They want other countries to change by knowing this. And because of this awesome message, it's an, a privilege to share, but you know that it takes a lot of finances and resources to get books out there and to go where they want to go, where other people can't go. There may be places that you have in your heart to go. There may be countries that are in your heart and you may not ever be able to go there. But when you decide to partner with Mark Hankins Ministries, he is able to go to those places and she is able to go to those places and teach them who they are in Christ and teach them their authority as a believer. They're able to write the books and translate the books into so many different languages so that people all over the world get this message. I encourage you to pray about partnering with Mark Hankins Ministries with my parents. It is their heart and their desire to keep this message going longer, stronger, and further than they could ever go themselves. I encourage you to pray about partnering with Mark Hankins Ministries, and we thank you. Those of you that have partnered, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you for helping us fulfill the will of God for our lives, for Mark Hankins and Trina Hankins, for their life. We thank you so much, and we pray that God richly blesses you. Join Mark and Trina Hankins for an hour of powerful teaching live Monday through Friday on Facebook and YouTube at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Everyone can join In Christ Bible School. Catch the spirit of faith and move the mountains in your life. Watch live wherever you are and learn who you are in Christ. That's live at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.